and, and as the minister is in the room, I will go back. I funded this textbook because the state wouldn't and told me it had to be funded by an individual. That is a political failing. I could have put bias into this textbook. We need proper textbooks, digital resources. We need teachers to be trained and we need ongoing teacher training. And the impact on our economy, the impact on mental health, the impact of capability of young people, the impact on employability of young people would be manifest. And the 40 million is not a costed figure, and I know that's very important. Uh, it is not a costed figure, it is a totemic figure, but I think those are the scales of magnitude we are talking to be able to have a radical difference. If you gave young money 40 million pounds to go and sort all this out, you could do a hell of a lot of good work. And I think it should be you, the state, or all of us, not reliant on private individuals, whether they're well-meaning or not. We have to find a way to make sure every school is teaching this. I, I'll, I'll give you, forgive me. It's every school in every phase? Because we're talking primary, secondary, post-16, or, or, or are you focusing now on every secondary integral school? for me, secondary and post-16. I would like it to be in primary. Uh, and Russell may differ on that, but that is my view. I'd li I think it's absolutely integral. But I just, I feel, and this is a deliberate soundbite, but it is worth saying, payment protection insurance mis-selling that I was heavily involved in helping people get their money back, £40 billion pounds of that, £40 billion was paid back. Now, that was a, a policy that people shouldn't have been sold and missold and was done by confusion marketing and deliberate systemic mis-selling by script by Britain's biggest financial institutions. It's not 10% or 1% of that money that we need. If 0.1% of the amount of money that was missold on payment protection insurance was put into financial education, which would be £40 million, pounds, we would absolutely completely revolutionise everything that we have ever done. And we are talking, you know, rounding errors of the amount paid back on just one mis-selling scandal. Mm. And perhaps if we put the 40 million in, we wouldn't have the 40 billion mis-selling scandal in the first place. This is about being joined up as a society and making sure that as we live in one of the world's most competitive consumer societies, <coughs> that companies spend billions of pounds a year on advertising and marketing and teaching their staff to sell, that we try and redress that balance with a little, bias, balance with a little bit of consumer and buying training and financial education for our young people when they are professionals at learning and that is when they're at school. It's much tougher once they're adults. Teach them when they're actually their whole job is to learn. Thank you. My, my question to you, Martin, you personally funded a financial education uh, textbook, Your Money Matters. Yes, there. Well done. And almost 350 copies have been sent to state secondary schools in England. Why did you feel that it was necessary? Um, I was told it was necessary by the then Minister for Education, Nick Gibb, who I sat in a meeting with and I went to complain about, we've had it on the curriculum for about three years, nothing's been done, no state funds have been put in. And he said, we need a textbook. I said, yeah, we need a textbook. He said, we need a textbook. I said, we need a textbook. This went round in circles for a little bit because I couldn't quite understand what was being said. And I said, you should do a textbook. And he said, no, you should do a textbook. <laughs> now, I'm not the government. I'm a private individual. I actually have a substantial political objection that a private individual should be asked to pay for a textbook to go into all mm. schools. I think we wouldn't ask GlaxoSmithKline or the chair of GlaxoSmithKline to pay for chemistry textbooks. I don't understand why I was asked to pay for it, but on a practical basis, it was, I was told quite succinctly it was not going to happen unless I funded it. So I funded it over my own objections. And we funded the English textbook, 350,000 textbooks to all schools. It's still available for those watching. Forgive me plugging. Free download from the Young Money website. Anybody can get it. Lots of adults say it's useful. <coughs> Since, after that, we did Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, which was jointly funded, 50% by me and 50% by the Money and Pension Service. And I'm glad they stepped up to the plate. We're actually just... As an aside, we're working now, I've just funded Young Money to work on an adult non-curriculum mapped version because I think lots of adults said it was useful so we thought we could do some small tweaks and get it out there for them. But I mean, I think that it's completely wrong. And the problem is we've got a teacher's guide as well. There's still no teacher's training. Mm. There's no ongoing training for teachers. There's just zero resources put in this. And we're not talking, I mean, you'll tell me, what was my donation for this, Russell? You'll remember more than I did. In excess of half a million in the end. Okay, so half a million pounds. <clears throat> now, that's quite a lot from my charity budget, but it's not a lot from state education funds. I mean, and, and the farce of this, if you forgive me, because it's a good place to say it, we came back with our first proposal working through a publisher where I'd fund the writing of it, 
and, and some of the distribution, then we'd have a publisher. And then the Department for Education said, oh, no, you can't do that. Said, what do you mean we can't do that? They said, well, we can't support it if you go via a publisher. We're not allowed to support it if you go via a publisher. So again, after a bit of I said, what are you telling? They said, you have to publish it. So not only did I have to fund the writing and the distribution, we actually had to fund the publishing and the printing. It basically, we had to self-publish. If we didn't self-publish, we couldn't get the, the, the Department for Education to do the letter it did to schools supporting the textbook. Now, forgive me, what a bloody farce. Mm. I mean, isn't that not, is that not just ridiculous? A private individual was asked to fund yeah. this. I didn't very deliberately in the contract of funding that I did with Russell, I wanted it stated that I did not have editorial control, mm. right? Because I thought it was important. I've written a foreword, mm. and because of what I do in my day job, I read it and gave some feedback about things I thought could be nice, but not editorial control. But I could have gone in a contract for some form of editorial control or overwriting it, couldn't I, as a private individual? I could have done that. Mm. I could have put my stance into schools. I could have used it as a piece of propaganda. I could have done all of those things. That doesn't seem right to me. I also chair, I'm chair of governors of a, of a primary school in, in, in Gateshead, um, where 50% of the youngsters are on free school meals. It's like a poor community that that school serves. And I'm wondering, you know, is financial education for some families almost like an abstract concept? You know, how, how do you manage with no money? Well, I mean, that's an existential crisis right across our society at the moment. The number of people who go to debt counselling agencies, over 50% of them are still deficit budgeting afterwards. Can't fix that one. Frankly, that's your issue, not mine. I, you know, that's, that's, the, that's a political issue in society. I don't think it is existential. I don't think it... You have to teach them, because hopefully life is going to improve. Hopefully they're going to be able to get work enabled and, and not be in that situation later on. I'm very minded of a project I did with another charity, the Trussell Trust, the food banks, where I, um, we, I, I have funded uh, money and debt counselling in food banks. And what we found was at the point of asking for help, people were the most receptive to getting this for mm. adults. Obviously, people were the most receptive to getting to help. Mm. So while it, while it is that concept, you know, if you talk about this in the round, I often do a speech in my shows when we get to Christmas and when I'm talking about debt, which is actually about when someone says they can't come out, let's stop saying, oh, come on. And, you know, and actually, let's be in a society where we could say, my finances don't allow me to come out, and that's seen as a reasonable excuse to not be able to do something. And actually, we all need to go, oh, totally get you. Maybe we'll come around to your house and we'll all sit in and we'll watch the telly, or whatever it is, we'll do something of that. And I think there is something to be said in those 50% of free school meals home of financial education. I mean, we have to be very careful not to scare children, actually helping children understand um, I was listening to Peter Kay's book bizarrely on the way in and he was talking about when his dad lost his job and he didn't get the Atari he wanted he got a different present and actually I'm not sure there's anything wrong and we won't get into the, the issues with the Father Christmas issue but anyway um, I'm not sure there's anything wrong in, in that type of environment with a little bit of understanding that things have to be paid for and your parents might not always have the money and it's tight budgeting and whenever I've spoken to kids about that I mean, probably have only yet done it for kids over the age of nine or ten, and certainly teenagers. When they have the epiphany moment of understanding what budgeting means, they actually become more supportive. It takes the pressure off the parents, and it makes life easier. And so I would probably say it, it's maybe more crucial in those environments than anywhere else. But there's something to Martin's point about preparing people for that world of work and supporting them is understanding that when you get your payslip, you're not just getting all the money that's in your salary, but it is being divided between the tax and the pension and everything else. And, and, and I think that's something which universally, you know, the education system has not failed to equip people for. Well, the, um, the education system hasn't. I think universities have singularly failed in explaining student finance and how it works. You know, we, we educate our youth into debt or at least into what we call debt. I would argue it probably isn't a debt, but we, that's another discussion. And yet we n never educate them about debt. Mm -hmm. And then I think employers, you know, people don't understand their paychecks. They don't understand that their, yeah, their tax code number is their responsibility, not their employers. And, and they, people feel it's der derogated up to the employer, but it isn't. So right across society, we don't do this well enough. And by actually starting this in school, you think of the benefits that you have, but also the employability of young people. Because, you know, whatever industry you are, actually, there's very few jobs that don't involve some idea of budgeting, right, or at least understanding that you have a budget and you have to stick to it. And so 
while I would still want those clear lines, I do think there are very transferable skills from looking after your own personal finances to then going and looking after your employer's finances once you get there and understanding what an interest rate is. I mean, you know, that, that a high APR is a bad thing. Not a good thing. It's as simple as that. And don't assume that everybody knows that. Well, I remember during those 2014 debates, we were quoting statistics about university students and the proportion of them who thought that APR was a higher, um, uh, the higher the better. So it's definitely a challenge. And earlier, think, Martin, yeah. you gave a figure for how much would you could really launch this with. It, it, and, and, it, and, and now that the minister is sitting behind you, why don't you repeat the figure? So I, I said if we put in 0.1% of the amount of PPI that was missold, which is £40 million into financial education. And, and as the Minister is in the room, I will go back. I funded this textbook because the state wouldn't and told me it had to be funded by an individual. That is a political failing. I could have put bias into this textbook. We need proper textbooks, digital resources. We need teachers to be trained and we need ongoing teacher training. And the impact on our economy, the impact on mental health, the impact of capability of young people, the impact on employability of young people would be manifest. And the 40 million is not a costed figure, and I know that's very important. Uh, it is not a costed figure, it is a totemic figure, but I think those are the scales of magnitude we are talking to be able to have a radical difference. If you gave young money 40 million pounds to go and sort all this out, you could do a hell of a lot of good work. And I think it should be you, the state, or all of us, not reliant on private individuals, whether they're well-meaning or not.